Unfortunately, I think we. Whoa! I think we. Uh, here's the uh, here's the small graphics. I think collective is a. Is can't a put it program. all the way back, otherwise the phone's going to fall backwards. You want to do it the other way? Um, that might be too low. Um, there we go. I can put the monitor down on the table. If it's too cumbersome having the uh, phone up in the air like that. Uh, a TI pretty, artist pretty had a utility <laughs> called yeah, Artists and Larger. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> to where yeah. you could take these small instances and uh, make them bigger. So this is an example of some of the photos that I printed out. Uh, a paw print a ribbon, a sailboat, a, a cargo ship, the space shuttle, um, and all this other stuff. Oh, okay, there's our penguin that we saw. And nowadays, of course, you can get all kinds of images and convert them into, I mean, you can take, you can take photographs and convert them into GIFs and into uh, mm -hmm. other formats that we can now print out. and. Uh, if, but of course, if you're doing it in page, if you're doing it with a TI, you're you're a dedicated enthusiast. You're not doing it to turn out a weekly newsletter because there are so many different programs now on PCs and, and on Macs mm -hmm. to use that it's uh, it's a whole different world out there. But mm -hmm. but remember, this is 1989. We're talking about this is. 33 years ago, and this was cutting edge, this was top of the line, and uh, as excited as we could be about doing this stuff, I, I, mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was enthusiastic as hell. Yeah, uh, here's an advertising they have, where it's all single column on the left side, they got the borders, you got one font here, a different font here, one big font here up to this point, and then a smaller font. You got this graphic. You got the big font for the price. It's uh, so the flexibility there. of uh, uh, they had disk cell fonts, and you can go nuts collecting all the different fonts yeah. that everybody's created on the TI. You got a block font. You got a computer esque font. Uh, you got a tiny one. And video quality is not great with that, but stuff. And we had fonts in different languages as well. Mm -hmm. We had Greek, we had Russian, we mm -hmm. had uh, uh, <laughs> there's so much stuff that uh, we didn't even know how much we had. We had we published this uh, encyclopedia of graphics. It ran to what 250 pages. Uh, three three volumes, of which the blue and the red were our first volumes, and were widely distributed. Uh, the green, uh, I think I might have the only copy extant of the green uh, volume. That was done with a 24-pin printer, and um, it was turned out by Don Jones, and um, it is. It's a sad, sad fact, but it's what bankrupted the club. Uh, we had, he <clears throat> sent the, instead of having them printed per se, he had them photocopied at 10 cents a page. And um, we went through, Plus, that was uh, our mistake. Okay, here uh, I'll turn the shortcut on. And you see I could just move this graphic real quick. Now I'll turn the, uh, shortcuts off and display the actual picture and you see how long it takes to actually display the picture my page pro uses a shortcut yeah i complained about that 24 pin pr uh, printer because it stretched all the distorted all the pictures it stretched them horizontally yeah and but uh, the idea was to show people what the picture was going to look like more or less I mean, it was uh, as close as we could get. Uh, yeah, again, he had the 24. Yeah, here's player. a picture of the console. Everybody looks for those. You got a picture of the TI or got a picture of the P box? Uh, again, the discs of fonts. I didn't, I didn't catalog these and put a. Uh, 
And then the border fonts, oh, here's a, a shortcut of all the different fonts that were available. <clears throat> so yeah, they went nuts. Pack fonts package two, fonts package three. We still have uh, red and blue um, manuals. Uh, unfortunately, they were being held out in, I think it was West Dundee. And I've forgotten the name of the fellow who uh, used to go and empty our mailbox mm -hmm. now. But he had them in his garage, and he had a flood. And a lot of the stuff was destroyed. Boxes and boxes were destroyed. Mm -hmm. So. I have the remaining few that are available. No homeowner's insurance? Couldn't file a claim on that? We or? never got squat. He mm -hmm. just okay. brushed us off and, and uh, he was um, <coughs> he was uh, a little bit uh, less than forthcoming about some of the stuff. Yeah, well these yeah. things happen. And he, he refused he refused to, uh, at one point, when I was the president of the board, refused to give me the mail. He had turned it over, only turned it over to uh, Don Jones. Um, forgotten his name now, I could check it. It was, uh, got to remove the space there. Put her fingers. Uh, yeah, and then they got the clay. Oh, here's your borders. So if you want to draw like a frame with the correct shading and such, they got all sorts of stuff. And then all oh, your pictures catalogs. I don't think we have like a slideshow viewer for this format. You got the uh, TAS, T-A-S-S, the TI Artist Slideshow that automates it if it's in TI Artist format. Yeah. No. So, okay, so here, I, yeah, I did print it out. The animals, uh, the uh, voids. There was one, um, I don't, I, I, the name Mickey Sandrowski keeps popping up in my mind when I think about it. A certain things. I don't know if she did. No, she was with uh, not Centronics, not was Carpenter. It Erie group? Was it the Erie oh. group? It was Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. Pittsburgh group. Uh, she did a bunch of uh, nautical stuff. I think it was mm -hmm. lighthouses and um, some ships and things like that. I think we've got all of that. Uh, a photorealistic turkey, which is pretty darn good for an eight-pin printer. Just all sorts of stuff. Okay, the pyramid. This one, uh, that was on uh, uh, the Living Tomb. Uh, that uh, arcade type game where you're uh, doing a, uh, a uh, tomb or a maze exploration. Is that John Benke's? Uh, uh, no, that was um, uh, not Paolo. Bagnarisi, it was, uh, oh, I forget who did Living Tomb. I'm sorry. So, <clears throat> so yeah, they had, uh, you know, big impressive stuff, like a floral, uh, like a cornucopia. A ton of stuff, an mm -hmm. absolute ton of stuff, and um, uh, pictures, and stuff could be converted into uh, PagePro uh, using PixPro and uh, using... Uh, PC, if you get a uh, bunch of pictures, a bunch of GIFs, a bunch of uh, uh, anything, uh, could be converted and, and, and printed mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And it was, uh, and there were other programs that would do it as well that were uh, maybe Real even talking about some of those. But, uh, yeah, once I get past the pictures, you had seven, eight volumes of pictures. This uh, number eight is uh, sports. Nine. Christmas holidays, <clears throat> 10 generic publishing tools. Here's another border font where you could frame your, uh, frame your work. 
Okay, the European creatures. Oh yeah, this is uh, page pro picks. Was that by Ken Gillian? Um... No, it's by, uh, I can't read that sideways. Can you tell me what that says? M-E. Mediaware software. Okay. No, uh, Ken did the Halloween stuff mm -hmm. and he did the uh, Middle Ages where he had gargoyles and witches mm -hmm. and monsters and stuff like that. Now that was a different format. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Is that a basculus? Uh, that's called a, uh, no, it's just a shorthand name. E-C-S-E-T-0-1. And, uh, yeah, he had all sorts of uh, bizarre-looking uh, monsters for that. <clears throat> we'll go ahead at your own speed. A ton of stuff, a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um... Oh, yeah. And then we had the uh, Star Trek calendar where you had the pe people from the Star Trek The Next Generation. And uh, this is just the top half of the picture that is actually Commander Data at a sewing machine with uh, uh, Captain uh, Picard. Picard's pants. Picard is in his polka dot shorts. And he's saying, make it so, S-E-W. Oh, I wonder if that was a pun or what. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. So this is just like the top half of each picture. And uh, I think this was for a calendar. Oh, here, here's the whole picture. Okay. See, I tried printing out more than one picture to a page and it cropped them badly. So, yeah, yeah there's Picard in his polka dot uh, boxer shorts. And uh, all the characters. Now, of course, nobody at home can see this, but, uh, and we are streaming. Oh. You might, uh, you might open that up. Um, right, you might show some of the artwork in front of okay. you if you get a chance. All right. Uh, how much the, can uh, they see? Can they see if I set it on the table? They can see the whole thing. They can, can see, see the whole screen right now. They're yeah. okay. seeing everything. It's not really sharp, but so this was neither, the... neither are the uh, graphics. Um, Star Trek pictures. You might want to raise it up just a little bit. No, it's perfect. Uh, well, no, it. because what it shows on the camera oh. and what it actually is streaming to YouTube is different. Oh, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So That's anyway, here's see Picard in his boxer shorts, Commander Data at the sewing machine saying make it so. And uh, this would be good for a calendar program of uh, all the characters. Uh, guess what TV show was popular when this was made? Mm, so yeah, the, besides, uh, uh, they get them, uh, they get them out pretty good. Okay, this had to be second season. Because Riker didn't have a facial hair in the first season. He was clean shaven. Oh, that pesky Q guy. Boy, talk about delusions of grandeur. Uh, oh, then we had mermaid pictures by uh, Bill Nelson. So he, the Little Mermaid was popular at the time. Yeah, you we could, have a Disney you, remake of that. Yeah, you, you could turn that into a kid's uh, mm -hmm. coloring book. Coloring book, yeah. yeah. So it was a ton of different uh, graphics and uh, stuff available. Okay, and here's, oh yeah, here's what I was looking for. The uh, Page Pro Cataloger which has the, uh, gives you a quick hard copy printout of all these page pro files, line fonts, small fonts, large fonts, borders, pictures, pages, and text files. So the page pro itself came out, and I think there were more utilities. Here's the page pro page composer. Yes, I remember this. I here, remember this uh, one. Here, I'll tell us what it is. Yeah, um, <laughs> this right here, this is page pro uh, composer. And uh, Chris, I'm going to have to apologize to you online. Uh, I think at the uh, at the fair out in um, Gurney, uh, we I think we bought one copy 
And uh, as I recall, you and I, uh, Vic, uh, managed somehow to. Uh, um, <clears throat> well, that's a copy we bought. Yeah, and and if you if you remember, because I got the colored cover and got. And the, remember, there were blank pages in here too. We were a little bit annoyed about that, and um, the result was that we had to copy some pages and insert them because there was a, a, a problem there. A misprint and, in the manual. And then, and then, there is a, a small, very small section in here that tells you how to, there's one line, I think it is, and I, can, I can't remember the exact function, but it took me rereading the damn manual 10 times to finally find the one line in here that I that made it impossible for me to use this program, and I can't for the life of me. I think it was 4.7, something like that. It was, it's the tiniest one line statement in here. At any rate, I, I don't remember the exact circumstances. It's been 20 years, uh, but it was something that was, uh, uh, <laughs> it was pretty annoying at the time. And I finally, finally discovered it, and in my copy, I have it heavily underlined and mm. highlighted. Um, and I'd have to go back and look at that. Well, he does have uh, two pages here. Uh, in the back under section 9.0 in case of difficulty where he runs pretty much the uh, gamut of uh, document error gives an error a document editor gives an error when loading uh, picture document will not load keys do not auto repeat when held down uh, well, my, my mouse doesn't always work something that I couldn't do because there was a command that I didn't know. I finally found that damn command. Oh. Okay. Uh, but it was one line. It was not highlighted. It was not uh, mm -hmm. in any way. Uh, so you had to buy, if you, if you copied the program, if you pirated mm -hmm. it, and didn't get the full manual, you weren't going to be able to use it. Uh, it was like a lot of the stuff in my compendium. If you didn't have the review, if you didn't know what the functions were, you couldn't tell from the disk of programs that oh. my companion brought out. So uh, I always made sure that I had both the, the program and the, and the disk mm -hmm. uh, so I know what I'm doing. I am going to run and check and make sure that there's nobody in here at 3 o'clock. Okay. Uh, and then would you, I'll just tell them we're going to stay until 4. Yeah, so there's more accessories from PagePro that you can shake a stick at. Here's Clip X, which lets you clip uh, PagePro graphics that are too big if you want to squeeze them down or make them smaller uh, to fit the page that you're actually printing it on. And now. Uh, yeah, I guess it was going to really be getting into desktop publishing with this TI when these came out. Ha uh ha. -huh. And then, uh, oh, uh, Ed Johnson and Paul Scheidermantel's uh, Page Pro FX. Different effects, like if you want to have something fade out. Um, tells you how to use it. Um, scaling an image. Uh, contrast. Now you get to play with high contrast photography. Uh, if you remember the program GIF Mania, uh, when you go to load a GIF image, you get to set the brightness and contrast. So if you set the brightness down low, just about the whole picture is black. If you set it real high, about it, the whole picture is white. So as you go through the range, you get to see different details. This will actually do a negative image. So it's like fun playing with uh, high contrast photography. 
Uh, do you remember uh, multi-plan? How you had to tape multiple sheets together? Well, yeah. Just like multi-plan sideways printer, you had page pro picture sideways printer for printing pictures. Uh, say like you wanted to make a giant image. Uh, several outfits had poster and banner makers where you print out uh, each page of paper is like one part of the actual page so you can make a giant poster. Page Pro Headline Maker, if you want to make your own headline font, I believe. Yeah, we went nuts with this desktop publishing. Okay, uh, this is more fonts for Page Pro. And here's the examples of the headline fonts, which are big scaled fonts. Not just small uh, fonts scaled up where they look all uh, pixelated, but actual large fonts. <clears throat> oh, and I had mentioned... Uh, yeah. There we go. This away. So yeah, I use these loose, loosely bind, binders and these page uh, protectors for everything. Uh, the Page Pro Banner Maker. If you had uh, fan fold paper and a uh, tractor or friction feed uh, printer, uh, you could make a banner uh, 50 feet long, uh, saying anything you wanted it to. Uh, here's more of the I've Page Pro right headline fonts and page pro large fonts. So I think that brings us to the end of the, oh, and page pro line fonts. And uh, the first thing you can do is print out the example of all the different fonts they have, the border fonts, patterns, you can use this filler. So this whole page pro library, uh, I will personally hand deliver anywhere in the world for one million dollars. <laughs> Deal of the century. Patro 99 utilities fonts, picks, European creatures, Star Trek Next Generation, mermaid picks, cataloger, etc. <clears throat> oh. And that includes your uh, uh, famous 90-day uh, as-is uh, guarantee, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if you want a TI to actually use it on, that's another million dollars. Yeah. Which will include a console, a P-Box, with two half-height disk drives. Yeah. And by disk control. By, 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 by shoe guards, yeah. Two half-height disk drives right. as opposed to one full-height. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the one full height is only single sided. Single sided and, and 35 track, if I remember. Right, right. So, uh, going to the uh, half height drives, which I've accumulated. Ugh. Oh, I'm going to try to. Uh, seem to be having trouble with my. Uh, is your, do you have some cable filter because of the uh, tossing of books around on your cables? I seem to be having trouble with my uh, P box getting along with the uh, TI. Uh, I haven't had this problem. Make sure all your cables are seated correctly. A long time. What? Technical difficulties with yeah. the TI? Oh. How rare, how unheard of, how absolutely incalculable. Hmm. Well, that's one for the history books. Yeah. <laughs> TI demo that doesn't go absolutely 100% smoothly? What huh. a synthesizer. Who, who knew? Sometimes it actually works better. When in doubt, stuff another sidecar in, right? 
Well, sometimes the uh, connections aren't that oh, good. Oh, yeah, not exactly level and not making good electrical contact. I wrote an article for Michael Pendium, actually, on um, wobbly connections. Uh, it was printed. Uh, it was sort of tongue-in-cheek. And um, what I suggested was putting a couple of rubber bands on the, uh, the uh, speech synthesizer and the ele elephant foot to hold them together. And uh, <laughs> he actually printed the article. I thought I got a kick out of that. I think I've still got the rubber bands on there. So, yeah, on one of the uh, TI Facebook pages, uh, one gentleman was talking about how his late father had written in Extended Basic a uh, recipe uh, program that was supposed to be like a card index. And uh, boy, this Ooh. thing is. That's not a bug, that's a feature in case you're watching yeah. at home that this is a uh, real, just, yeah. real machine. The trouble with the, we're uh, just checking to see if you're still awake. And uh, if you saw that, uh, then you're, you're, uh, you're, do yeah. not adjust your set. P-Box uh, is seem to have trouble talking to the TI. That mirror should happen. Should have worked last year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kids, don't try this at home. Remember, electricity is dangerous. Um, and loading uh, extended basic again. So I hate moving this thing anymore. Okay, that worked correctly. So now we'll go back to uh, So anyway, this gentleman's father had written an extended basic program of a uh, recipe card catalog program. And I knew that I had the uh, electronic gourmet that I had bought at a uh, Chicago TI fair some time ago. Uh, this one is appetizers, and this collection is uh, Southwestern recipes. And um, I know I had that, and I had one called Recipe Writer 2. And uh, I would have liked to have been a hero and helped them, but Recipe Writer 2 is written in uh, C99. Uh, it's not written in uh, extended basic. Mm. So it would be poor help for him, except showing the basic structure of how this kind of a uh, program would work ideally. Because uh, what he had was the skeleton of the program of, uh, you know, a main menu and how to look up uh, different uh, uh, cards on that had different recipes but there was no data in it yet let me see about uh, doing the directory on this and because uh, this uh, doesn't seem to have a load program for extended basic to pick up automatically and it doesn't have that either Was uh, C99 for the programming language for the TI? Or? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a C language. Uh, from the TI, it had its own uh, Richard A. Green, had the rag assembler uh, that was nice because you could see it line by line on the screen, uh, the commands that were in there and what it uh, assembled them into. And it was related to C? Or yeah. A dialect? Yeah, C? yeah. It was yeah. Their, ver their version the, of C for the TI. Yeah. So was it a more or less a straight version of C, kind of towards the either Jargon and Ritchie standard or? Um, I don't know. It uh, was written an awful really, long time ago. Or C version. Um, or the other thing that was prevalent in that era for small micros was also the um, uh, small C programming language by Ron King, uh, which was a subset of the original C language that mm -hmm. didn't require quite as much system resource to run it, but there were some trade-offs in terms of features available. What? Compromises? Compromises in a program? Oh, <laughs> who knew? Like compromises in a sailboat, unheard of, absolutely unheard of. You can have a cruiser or racer uh, that sleeps uh, 12, well, six, six regularly or 12 in heat, uh, still win races and cruise around the world uh, with huge tanks of water and gasoline and uh, all under $20,000. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. All right, well, now I'm getting disc errors. This is but they're all advertised that, right? I was going to show you a recipe writer. I guess I can't. I'm not going to blow the disc constantly trying to uh, read it. Oh, well. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. As we know. Funny how we did all the page pro stuff. And if anybody wants to actually see that program again it will come to your house anywhere in the world and demo it uh again for the mere million dollars which includes the round trip character yeah right yeah and your money back guarantee of course if you're not ten thousand percent satisfied which of course you have to prove in writing mm -hmm. yeah and get a doctor's certificate. I was real happy when I got this uh, nano PEB because it uh, Oh, okay. That's uh, the first disc. I've shifted uh, gears here. Instead of using the P-Box, I'm using a Nano PEB with the... Uh... Nano PEB with my own utilities on it. Do I have an MGR-1 on here? No, I guess not. We got DMTK. See, yep. MGR. Why we got boot? Ah. Butterfingers. Disc three. Yeah, the Nano has uh, three uh, disc drives built in. So I put all my utilities on disk three because uh, in the TI world, uh, very little ever uses that. There we go. Okay, now we're in the boot menu. So I could do a one show directory of disk one. And this disk has no name, but it's got a bunch of pictures on it. And if I wrote them down, uh, then I would uh, be able to use the uh, RLE plus uh, image viewer to uh, actually see them. Go back. 
it's two. Uh, yeah, these are all uh, KI artist uh, pictures, except for just a couple of them. You got Mickey Mouse, you got a mailman, you got Howdy Doody. And uh, those are instances or uh, pictures because I see some peas. Those are yeah. the peas are the pictures, right? Those are the bigger ones. Yeah. Yeah, I see uh, Max Arley there. Load. If I can pick up this too? No, didn't. Thought that was it. This one was uh, Tiger Cub uh, 1209. Okay. Dino. Try picking up a load program off of disk one. There we go. So here's uh, Max R. Lee. So we get uh, Dino number one. I must be asking for something that's not there. We all, we all married guys know about that. <clears throat> I think you could do a catalog with RLE by just typing in the path name. There you go. Baseball, Billy Bob, Dino number one, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Maybe it's... Uh, oh, there it is. It takes time to render it. Okay. So there's a dinosaur. Uh, we have a guest in uh, Max RLE format. Press the space bar, enter. Dino number two. Get too impatient. It takes time for uh, Max RLE to render it. Ah. Reminds me of uh, Ken Gilliland had his uh, several disc of dinosaurs uh, fun programs where he had different pictures of the dinosaurs and different facts and a questionnaire. White House. Huh. Now that's a pretty nice rendering of the White House. Let's do a catalog of disc number two. Okay. Okay. Earl Childhood Friend, Howdy Doody. We got Donald Duck, we got a Ferrari, we got Mickey. Let's try Mickey. Mickey Crockett, Frontier Mickey. Boy, that's a strange one. Yeah, Christmas is over. I'm sure everybody saw the uh, 
Woodstock Christmas that, uh, who was that, Ray Kasmer did? In various incarnations of Snoopy. Do another disc catalog, disc three. Uh, Identifile is a uh, good program. You know, in TI world, you get so many files on disk, you don't know what they are, if they're an extended basic program, if they're an uh, uh, editor assembler program, what. But anyway, with uh, uh, Identifile, you can catalog them. Now, on this page, you can actually select different devices. If you have disk drives named uh, disk one, two, three, if you have a RAM disk and you do them by letter like ABC, uh, if you got a hard drive, then you would use the WDS one, two, and three for Winchester drive system. So if we look at uh, disk one and it catalogs the disk, and now it tells you uh, section by section, this first part up here, a baseball. It's a 10DF, 128P. Uh, it's an RLE picture, binary. So this is nice because you can actually go through it and you can see what are pictures. And if we go down through here, uh, there you go. Flickr, P, TI artist picture. It's not an RLE. Uh, it's the uh, TI artist. Although I think Max RLE will display it just fine. But uh, Identifile will tell you actually what it is. So you're not sitting there trying to load an RLE file into a TI artist and going nuts. Uh, okay, there near the bottom there, load, basic or extended basic program, Max R. That's the actual program that load runs is Max RLE. Uh, is it editor assembler run program file? And now we're back to RLE picture files, uh, TI artist picture. We can go back, we can catalog a disk, we can catalog, uh, you gotta scroll down function then the uh, E or X keys, move the highlight down, press the enter key. Now it's cataloging all my utility programs on disk three. So you got ARC 40A, uh, that's archiver. And the ARC40B, Editor Assembler Run Program File. Uh, the same thing with boot and BOU. Catalog is a very simple, I think it's like the first uh, basic catalog program uh, TI ever released uh, that you can run out of a simple basic program. CF Manager is the uh, utility for cataloging and managing your disks on a compact flash. Nano PEB, uh, Disk Manager 2000, uh, FN Demo. Uh, oh yeah, that's why I was working with the uh, GEM project. Uh, identify all this program itself, load. Uh, Skyscape, always one of my favorite. Hey, we're supposed to have a comet coming through, aren't we? Gee, the, this one's going to be... Uh, too close. Be, uh, This green comet that's going to come through, it'll actually be glowing green. Mm. I think I saw that science fiction movie. The Green Slime. Which had the world's greatest rock and roll theremin soundtrack. <laughs> Have you heard? It's in the stars. Next week we collide with Mars. Mm -hmm. Gee, what a swell party it is. The Loch Ness. Do you know that? Yeah, oh, you're a Den fan too? Yeah. Or Richard Corbin? Or wasn't that, that was the heavy metal movie. Yeah, right? heavy metal movie. Okay. They took the uh, story called Den, drawn by Richard Corbin, 
in the heavy metal magazine. And uh, green, yeah. Green Comet, Green Slime reminded me of the Lochnar. Yeah. Okay. If I'm recalling that name. Or if you want to make a Patrick Stewart comic reference, you can also reference the film uh, Life Force. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You, you know, I do a role in that. I do I a lot of crossword, uh, a lot of crossword puzzles, and they have all these references to different movies and different TV shows, mm -hmm. and I have to work through that, uh, despite not having seen the movies or uh, the TV shows. And <coughs> some of them are, uh, some of them I recognize. Some of them I can figure out. Most of them go right, right over my head. Okay, we we'll work so, it out in the end. It takes longer, but I get it. So I was like, what, 50? What's the actual time? It doesn't matter. At 3 o'clock, this was the daytime sky over our latitude. Uh, the bottom row there is your astrological signs. Uh, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, Sagittarius. And uh, there's the planets in the sky. And there's your key at the bottom here. So at the uh, upper left, uh, that looks like uh, Jupiter. And then we've got uh, Saturn. It's pretty obvious because of the rings. And then we have the uh, symbol for... Uh, and nothing is above the horizon, eh? Symbol for uh, Venus. And the uh, dot, what is that, uh, that dot there? Oh, that's Mercury. And the uh, asterisk is the sun. So you can go to a different time. You can go to the planetary table. You can go to the date or you can go to the latitude. We'll go to a time. And so later on tonight, uh, say uh, at uh, 20, so at nighttime, again, you know, zenith is uh, zero is uh, the top, and the equator 90 degrees is at the bottom. And it's about 45 degrees there in the middle. So there we got Jupiter slid over to the right, and you have uh, Uranus is in the middle, and then you have uh, Mars and the moon, and uh, what's that asterisk again? The sun, huh? That ain't right. I wonder if this thing's running out of fingers and toes to count on, <laughs> that it's uh, casting the sun there at uh, 8 o'clock at night. Well, it's below the horizon, so... Uh, well, the horizon's the bottom of the screen. That dotted line there would be 45 degrees. Oh, 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 oh. I thought that was... Yeah. Oh, okay. Because uh, if you go with a different latitude, uh, we were at north 42 degrees. So if you want to go like south, say south 42 degrees. Darn it. Did I say 42? There we go. Uh, for uh, what? Uh, Australia. So then at... Uh, Seven o'clock at night. So now you got what the South Pole is at the, uh, the zenith is at the bottom, and the equator is there at the top. And it's like, boy, nothing's visible. Oh. Huh. Okay. So if you're in, uh, if you're in Oz. That's where everything would be. But see now, it's summer there, isn't it? So their their angle is, uh, yeah, they're more uh, inclined horizontal with the ecliptic. Yeah, so I've always enjoyed this program. I don't have the actual date, but they had in here for the uh, proper time around what 1982, if Halley's Comet was visible, would actually display it. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, mm -hmm. The um, I was about to say in Australia right now, and that's uh, just talked to my daughter. It's a hundred. It's over a hundred degrees in Adelaide right now. Ugh.
And that's a city, that's not the desert. Yeah, that's right, it's, it's uh, only a couple of miles from the sea. Yeah. Uh, and when the wind changes, uh, it can be a drop of 30 degrees in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know. Mm -hmm. Here's the Hello Catalog program. Let's list this. Uh, this program's not that long. One guy was trying to figure out uh, how he could find out what was on his uh, disk, and he didn't have a disk manager cartridge or DM-1000 or any of the disk manager programs. And so I uh, just put the text of this program uh, up in the, as a uh, email, and I said, here's something you can type in in a few minutes, and if you got a disk drive, the first thing you can do is save it or, you know, run it and see what's on the disk, and if there's enough room, you can save it, and you can put this uh, catalog program on every disk that you own. So it's asking me what disk. Let's go for disk one. And, uh, yeah, it's like this is the first program that TI put on all their disks uh, so you could catalog them. That makes sense. And... Identify all tells you what those programs are, you know, what they're used for. Because the DF-128 really doesn't tell you that much. What's Jesus used for? Jesus. Uh, that's an RLE program. Right. RLE being the, uh, the uh, RLE um, compressed graphic image, right? Yeah, this is Max RLE, sometimes called just RLE or Max RLE Plus. RLE stands for Run Length Encoded. Encoded, yeah. Encoded, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, which never made any sense to well, me. Well, it's, it's a method yeah. of doing compression. <coughs> yeah. It looks for runs of similar. Of, yeah. Of, the wonderful thing about all this computer stuff is I, I, I believe in the theory of magic. So I don't have to know how things yeah. work. I just know that it's magic. Okay. The popular Western interpretation of what we presume Jesus looks like. Eric would be happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, Eric. eBay, somebody was selling the Bible for big money signed by Jesus. <laughs> and I went like, well, that was fairly easy to do, but the amount of money he was uh, selling it for was like... I wonder what the time machine goes for. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure, he, I'm sure he was able to find a person whose name is Jesus yes. and right. said, hey, will you sign my Bible? It's like legitimate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You can guarantee yeah. that that's... And, uh, uh, and, I'll, and, and I would bet you an, an exorbitant amount of money that there are people out there who would buy it, too. Uh, you know, well, as P.T. Barnum said, Oh, yeah. yeah every su sucker born every minute. <laughs> yep. I, uh, Sometimes more frequent than that. Yeah, and I, I, you know, just on Blue Bloods last night on the TV show, Blue Bloods. Oh, yeah, the internet they, just multiplies. Yeah, they had the, uh, for that kind of thing. this poor woman who uh, uh, was told, for got growth. called, she thought, by the IRS and told to buy gift cards and send them the numbers off the back of the gift cards uh -huh. to uh, cover her, uh, her her debts, mm -hmm. her, her tax debts. Uh, and, and, you know, perfectly intelligent people will go out and do something like that because they're, they're scared and, mm -hmm. and uh, Fear. confused. Yeah. Billy Bob. Yeah, yeah, Billy Bob. I see, what is that, an Atari symbol over there on the left? So I don't know if that was a, a game that Atari did or... Easy enough to erase. <laughs> mm -hmm. I erase anything. I have nothing to do with anything that says Atari. I don't even go on the Atari thing on uh, Atari Age. I don't go on that because I don't like Atari. And it's one less thing I have to read. Mm -hmm. I get 300 junk mail in a, a day, and uh, if I don't keep up with it, oh yeah, uh, yeah. signal to noise ratio. Probably. Yeah, my wife 
my wife checks her, her junk mail about once a month. And she gets 10,000 or something. She yeah. doesn't get as many as I do. But she she's says, well, I have to just either erase them all. And uh, you can I usually see. tell your mail browser to uh, uh, purge after some okay. number of days. Yeah. Well, no, certain files. You can click on one particular file and say, move the, always right. move not, this to trash. Not, right. Or it's junk or right. spam or something like that. Or not yeah. junk in the case of a false positive. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got one, uh, one operating system that lets me do it individually, one that lets me do the entire um, spam folder. Uh, folder at once. And. Um, but I, because I get met, because I get messages from people um, that I I don't know, but I would you know like to respond to, like this guy Anthony Kistler or Chrysler, um, that that came into the junk file, and uh, so I I, uh, I immediately wrote to him and told him the information that, that he was requesting, mm -hmm. and um, or at least how to find the information he was requesting. I reported him to Barry mm -hmm. Miller and. Uh, Otherwise, that would have just been unnoticed, and uh, then he would just assume that, that I didn't respond. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I hate doing that to anybody, you know, especially yeah. if somebody's asking about the fare, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so much stuff is by the skin of my teeth I just barely catch. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, well, the guy who said his uh, dad wrote a recipe program. Yeah. yeah. And I was doing my best to help him, and instead I show him something that's written in assembly or C99 rather than extended basic. Uh, I know Bill Gaskell would be the guy to ask with his, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, his card file program and such. But that, uh, the whole spirit was finishing an extended basic, his dad's recipe card file program. Because uh, he had the whole skeleton of it where you got the main menu and you could select uh, are you going with appetizers, drinks, main courses, side dishes, desserts, everything else. And he had the whole structure there. We just didn't have any data for any particular recipes. And uh, I was disappointed. I found these two discs and it won't really help them. <laughs> So but no, the, uh, trick is, the trick is to create some recipes. Uh, yeah, but the uh, the recipe writer uh, would be uh, definitely uh, showing the structure yeah. of well, here's one that works, and it's a language you can't copy, but it shows you how it. And does the TI Library, the Chicago Library, have any index file programs or? I'm sure there's probably something anything there. like that. I have Somebody not gone. <laughs> I haven't looked at the library in a while. You know, every year I give out this little thumb drive that's got like eight gig of TI software on yeah. it, and I got stuff from. Uh, uh, Which you have to look at. Oh no, I've been working on trying to consolidate yeah. your lists, your listings. And and it's the, uh, the TI library, the Lima engines. library, uh, every, uh, all the uh, stuff in Europe that Barry Harmson gave me some years ago. Yeah. There's, uh, a, there's, a the last, stuff, there's a lot of duplication, however, of that's good. That yeah. shows that people are sharing. Uh -huh. uh, the means that if, if one disk is bad, you might be able to find the file on another Somewhere disk else, yeah. 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 Uh, Tiger Cub has like six disks that are bad, and they're not included in most collections. Yeah. And the collections that I do have that have those disks, they're corrupted. You can't read right. them. They're bad copies. Bad so it's copies. like, okay, so i got to try to find out where... I can find those discs. Yeah. But uh, Barry Harmson, no, he gave me like 8,000 programs yeah. on a thumb drive. He says, this is everything we have for the TI in Europe. I said, thanks, Barry. Yeah. And uh, so A the, lot of which was our stuff, too. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah. next time I was off for surgery, I went through it and cracked my knuckles and uh, went, uh, okay, I indexed everything. Here's everything that starts with the number zero then the number one, then two, all the way through, you know, 10. And then it was, here's everything that begins with A. Here's everything that begins with B. And I had to put them all into separate folders. And I'm not autistic enough <laughs> to do that. Or when to do that and be happy when doing it. When do you sleep? It. That's my question. When do you sleep? And uh, like I said, it was one of the times I was off on surgery and I just had weeks at home. 
uh, I was mobile, but I couldn't work. So I can't sit still that long. No, but it, it gave me something interesting to do that yeah. really occupied me. So on any of those discs of uh, the fair or the thumb drives, uh, yeah, all the stuff that says from Barry, uh, they're all indexed. And then I had those uh, modules on disc from all the fairs I had gone to. You never get bored, do you? I mean, you've always got something to do. Yes. If I get bored, I've always got something to do. <laughs> Play with my toes, in case, in case those at, at, uh, at home are wondering what that is. I couldn't see a reflection of the monitor. <laughs> uh, so what do we have here? Oh, yeah, I could have... Uh, I throw something like that in every show. Yeah, just, just for those people who are waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, you have to attend to see for the um, advanced hand gestures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a roaming camera like uh, C-SPAN has in Congress, where instead of just being focused only ever on the podium, yeah. uh, they can actually look around the whole room and seeing people sleeping. Yeah. Uh, seeing... Yeah. Uh, People, people laughing at the time when there's, uh, uh, you know, they're offering a solemn, uh, solemn uh, service or something. Uh, and what I, uh, have you ever noticed in a baseball game, uh, they'll be doing the national anthem. There's always some one of these guys you know, scratching themselves, or, you know, uh, or burping, or chewing gum, or you know, spitting. Um, and uh, well, if we're gonna get personal, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Uh, but it uh, it's funny because uh, uh, they, they, they the the league has a rule that says you know during the national anthem you will not scratch your butt you will <laughs> not spit you you know and and the guys get fined for some of that stuff. Uh, you know. Whereas the NFL says you know during the national anthem if you decide to kneel or you know give the crowd the finger or something like that that's that's perfectly fine uh, go ahead you know whatever you want to do apparently we've got a stronger union there we go yeah this is how the screens actually made I made this program a long time ago as an April Fool program because it would start up as the actual TI color bar screen and then when you pressed any key it would uh, uh, fail to load basic or extended basic and you'd think oh something's wrong with my computer and then it would go back to the color bar screen Remember when we and the letters would start at a tearing sound flying off in random <laughs> directions it scared the hell out of um, my my oldest son Harold who's okay. 48 now he was 10 at the time I think he'd oh god I broke the computer mm -hmm. And oh, he, he was almost in tears. I said, no, it's just a joke. And, uh, but uh, that's how long ago that was. Whoa. That's scary. You now you think about it. 48 now. And I'm 21. I don't know how the hell that happened. Uh, my mental age is 16. I took that test, you know. It shows you from mental age. <laughs> 16. Hey, I was pretty sharp when I was 16. <laughs> Sharper than I am today, that's for damn sure. Is this thing now uh, perfect it's long? Is it okay? going slowly? Oh, wow. The backup is taking its time. I was going to bring my uh, hotspot and uh, should have, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's not that big of a deal. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. because I'm compressing it. Well, so take next time, time, time I'll have to make sure to. Uh, I get like a, a one into two uh, VGA splitter and uh, see if you can find, uh, I think it's called Epifan, E-P-I. Okay, I think I got it right this time. Generously, yeah, yeah, Mr. Public Library. Well, this is fine. I think this is working great. Yeah, so crediting John. Those That's questions fine. in YouTube. He came over the other day. I hadn't seen him for a while. He came over, fixed a uh, uh, toilet, fixed uh, 
kitchen sink, fix the chairlift, more but, or less. But the question is, did he use the TI to do it? No, no, he didn't actually use the TI at any time. Uh, but, uh, oh, he fixed a little hand mixer, too. I forgot about that. That was, mm -hmm. yeah, it was uh, very pleasant. I don't think his wife knows he came. She doesn't like him to come. Oh, <laughs> to see us. A little to see us. To see us. He doesn't want to come to see us. Yeah, actually, I like the flag on the other one better. Uh, because that's a forty-eight star flag. Mm. And um, how many people do you think have ever noticed that? But it was very easy to draw. With the TI, it's an SS well, the banner. The question is, if you asked someone on the street how many yeah. stars are on the U.S. flag, how many would get it right? Yeah, I would imagine that there's quite a few mm -hmm. uh, millennials who haven't a clue. You know, you see that flag over there? Uh, yeah, which, oh, that one. Now, yeah. what is that flag? Target. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and I like this one better because it reminds me of the uh, sign off at nighttime, uh, night flight that they used to run on the stations before they oh, stopped yeah. broadcasting yeah. for the end of the day. It's got that real nice appearance, uh, but it plays the uh, Stars and Stripes Forever, you, not the national anthem. You can tell that's 50 stars, because they're yeah, not, yeah. not all in vertical yeah. columns. Now, for a long time, people have talked about if Puerto Rico votes to become our 51st state, how the heck are we going to put the stars on the flag? Well, there's a mathematics website on the net that's gone through that already. Right, so let's see the permutation. And they show from star. 13 stars to like 107 how they would fit correctly. Uh, nesting, you know, like even number, odd number, stuff like that, not just having one left over. And I think there's only like one number, like 83 or something like that. You can't evenly stack in a grid somehow in the place. Because they didn't want to have to remake the whole flag. Why they not? just wanted to use that square section in the corner. I think the question well, is actually a moot because I don't think Puerto Rico is in an ideal situation. They are American citizens, um, <coughs> but they don't have to comply with a lot of the things that we have to comply with. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they also. Uh, because of their uh, their, their um, tax structure, they're a haven for a lot of these companies mm -hmm. that want to say, uh, you know, be onshore but get the offshore benefits. Mm -hmm. And um, the pharmaceutical industry for a long mm -hmm. time was, was there. Yeah. And I suspect now that we have finally begun to realize that China is a communist country, for God's sake, that has oh, no, yeah. no, does not have our best interest. In in uh, uh, in any way uh, on their agenda, uh, that we need to reshore all of our uh, pharmaceutical, all of our mm -hmm. electronics. I mean, yeah. what the hell? I, I would rather well, buy well, one myself. Yeah. One for, but if I had to buy a, an Apple phone, I'd rather have one made in the United States, yeah. one made than one made in China that has Chinese chips in it that would yeah. listen to. You know, any conversation or anything I put on. A while phone. back then, President uh, Bush Jr., uh, people uh, thought he was going to boycott the Olympics that were held in China during his term. Yeah. And he says, well, I don't want to get uh, China mad at us. And I went, and I snickered. I went, they're already sending us poisoned pharmaceuticals, poisoned pet food, yeah, uh, cats, yeah. toys that are painted with toxic paints. Yeah. What are they going to do if they get mad at us? Yeah. What's left? And they're not going to nuke us because then we're their best customer. Yeah, right yeah. Now. I mean, right. They may be inter they may be internally communist, but externally they're fighting a oh, sure. capitalist trade. Yeah, absolutely, it's state capitalism, and yeah. it's uh, well, the economy's uh, a Ponzi scheme. So I mean, people think it's so inevitable they're going to pass us up. I don't think so. No, I well, I think what's going to happen at some point is, as their economy improves, just as in Japan. Uh, what will happen is that uh, they will get too expensive to, to, to deal with China. We'll move everything to Bangladesh or to you know yeah. Laos or North Vietnam or some other you some know other cheap country we can, we can exploit. Yeah. And and uh, 
the, the Chinese people will uh, eventually say, you know, we can't, uh, it's like England. For, for a hundred and some odd years, England was our enemy. And then uh, England said, hey, wait a minute. You know, why don't we get, we, we share our language. You're our best trade partner. Why are we having these wars, you know? Yeah. Uh, you're not going to invade Canada anymore. Uh, you're not going to try and kick us out of Bermuda. So let's just cut the crap and, you know, be friends. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it's funny how uh, when I was growing up, I think it said made in Japan. I was like, oh, my God. Tinsy. You know, yeah, and there was actually a bicycle manufacturer uh, in Japan. They changed the name of their town to Yusa. So they could put the letters made in Yusa yeah. on their product, read not U period, yeah. S period, A period, Yusa. So yeah. they could say so made, you, made in Yusa. I heard about that in the so, second, second World War, they tried. Yeah, so that was a dodge. And then uh, Japan's. Uh, well, you got to give them points for being clever. <laughs> uh, Japan uh, improved, and uh, then it got to the point you were going to buy a uh, TV. You wanted it with those. Uh, uh, three little diamonds on it. You know, that's what the trademark you were yeah, looking for. Uh, Mitsubishi, yeah. And, uh, and now it, it's, uh, boy, yeah, just it, try to find something made in Japan. A lot of stuff moved to Korea, but then it quickly well, stepped over to China. Yeah. Well, their, their population's aging. They don't have enough yeah. young people but to make But Korea that. had what? LG, Samsung, and what are the cars they have? Uh, Kia. Yeah. Kia and Hyundai. Yeah. They had Daihatsu in America for almost a year. Yeah. Uh, they had a, have a, a motorcycle, the uh, Hyundai, or the uh, 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 Hyosung, which sounds awful Chinese, but it's actually a Korean outfit using yeah. the uh, Yamaha motor that Yamaha uh, made for, buying, for uh, buying equipment, buying equipment yeah, OEM. Yeah, from, they designed yeah, it. Yeah. Nothing, nothing these days is pure any one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you notice, the drones that are attacking uh, Ukraine now are using chips that are made in, in America and uh, chips that are made in other countries. And they just that was just on um, uh, just on television that, that uh, they were showing uh, eight different eight different companies uh, chips made by eight different American companies in one of these Iranian drones that. Yeah, Iran they're using so Texas Instruments chips, mm -hmm. yeah. and TI says, "Well, that's just a generic controller that anybody can program for, yeah. you know, a refrigerator, a washing no, machine, a drone. Uh, it just works on anything." Well, so they Huber, the, Huber, Huber, Huber. Yeah. They're, um, or MSP four thirty microcontrollers and you know, yeah. the various lines of. Uh, Digital signal processors. Mm -hmm. They're smuggling refrigerators into Russia to rip the chips out. <laughs> yeah. So and, the sanctions and, must be yeah, doing they're, they're, somewhere. You know, there's all kinds of terrible things going on, and of course, you know, you can copy anything in the world, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just about. And uh, um, I mean, we know about piracy, don't we? Uh, but it, it's it's very difficult to stop this stuff. And um, uh, the Patriot missile. Patriot missile. Remember when uh, Don Walden broke, brought those uh, ceramic chips, the TI ceramic chips? Those are the ones that are being used in the Patriot missile and uh, TI chips uh, because of the numerical, the floating, 14 point floating. Double precision SP, math chip. Yeah, all yeah. those chips. Uh, yeah, like, and, their, like their modern DSPs have that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's been around for a long time, so mm -hmm. it's very hard to. Uh, uh, stop that flow of, of uh, chip. A few years ago, when uh, somebody, I, somebody I think it was in the Dutch group, asked Barry Harmson to ask me to inquire about uh, some of the chips, I think it was from Yamaha, um, because it, they were so expensive in, in Europe and they were much cheaper here. So I called the local number and they referred me to another number, an 800 number, which turned out to be in Japan. And when I called and asked about this, they had, they, the first thing was, what do you want to use them for? I said, well, I'm not entirely certain. I'm calling for a friend of mine. Well, what's his name and what is he going to use them for? I said, well, if I knew that, I'd tell you, but I don't. And I said, 
And if in Europe, he said, I can't talk to you, click. And I hung up in my ear. So the next time, I called a different number uh, for a different distributor, because they had two different kinds of chips. I was very cagey about the whole thing. And I said, well, uh, it's a proprietary system. I can't really discuss it at this point. They said, well, we can't, uh, we can't do business with you if we don't know what they're being used for. I said, well, I'm not a terrorist. I'm not putting them in a bomb or anything. I said, it's an application that, well, we need more information. And uh, I said, well, what the information I want from you is very simple. I said, how much is the chip and what's the, you know, the price point, the, the break point? And they said, well, that all depends. I said, what do you mean it depends? Where are you located? Where are you calling from? I said, what difference does that make? I said, well, there's a different pricing system, and we are not supposed to discuss that. And uh, I said, well, you mean it's different here than in Europe? As here being the United States and Europe? Yes. I said, oh, well, why is that? Is I'm not at liberty to discuss that with you. Can you tell me a little bit more about your application? I said, no, I can't. I Click, and then I'm over my ear again. Did you try Amazon? Was that? <laughs> Amazon? Yeah. Amazon has an app. Yeah, Amazon for, has everything. Yeah, yeah. There's an app. They don't ask any questions. You know, all, all they want to know is the credit card numbers, you know, and the little security code. Yeah. Yeah. Today, yeah. today yeah. that stuff is just, you know, you can just buy in small parts. It's no problem. Well, you get on the dark web, you well, can you buy have, you don't anything. Have to, you don't have to today. I mean, you just go to DigiKey and you buy mm -hmm. X number of whatever version of the MSP 430 or mm -hmm. the. You know, C9, C6000 DSP. And, yeah. And you're telling them you're sending it to South Carolina, and well, South Carolina is a guy who'll send it, it to you know, don't, anywhere. Don't in the world. tell them that. You just tell them you ship it to, to yourself domestically, and then you ship it back out. Yeah. And, and of course, you don't want to put your fingerprints on any Yeah, of but some of that like is. None of that's well, you know, you never know where the shit's going to end up these days. Yeah, Amazon has not had a lot of scruples. I mean, they no. sell stuff. They, like, they sell powdered. Caffeine. I mean, caffeine, when you consume it in coffee and cola, it's one of the mm -hmm. safest drugs. But this powdered mm -hmm. caffeine will, like, kill you. I mean, yeah. It's, like, super dangerous. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I have no scruples about it. You can, you, can buy, you can buy bacteria. You can buy uh, typhoid <laughs> bacteria and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the stuff that, that the, the World Health Organization says has to be sequestered. Well, you can buy all that crap online. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and one of these guys that... Uh, but you can buy arsenic, you can buy poisons, you can buy uh, mm -hmm. wolf bane, you can buy all this stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, you can get anything. <laughs> Anybody can get anything. What was that 12 year old kid who was putting together a nuclear bomb? He was buying well, most of that stuff on Amazon. <laughs> was, you just you know, can't get the fissionable material. Yeah, just, you know, send me a pound of plutonium, please. Uh, I, I, you have to be 21 to get that. You, know, you have to get a note from your doctor, your mom, you know, just whatever. Yeah, your father has yeah. to I have a friend that was interested in radioactive isotopes, and it's like, okay, just don't tell me about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I don't care what you're using it for. I don't care where you're getting it from. <laughs> <laughs> just don't tell me anything about it. I don't want to know. I tell you, the world is. So I think scary. he just wants to play with his dosimeters, and he's basically got a yeah. collection of stuff. I'm like, yeah, you can just buy some bananas and some old, buy some old smoke detectors. Yeah, well, you can go to United Nuclear online, <laughs> yeah. and these guys sell Geiger counters, dosimeters, and radioactive sources yeah. to police, fire department, paramedics, FBI, Homeland Security for training. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, guys, here's a Geiger counter. Here's a small radioactive source. I hid it in one of these suitcases. Can oh, you yeah. find it? Uh, I don't know if you remember a, uh, a steel contamination, a uh, metal recycling yard. Next Their step. Geiger counter went off, the one that was above the conveyor belt. And so they stopped it and they swept it. They found an old Echo brand, E-K-O, uh, E-C-K-O brand, cheese grater. It was radioactive. <laughs> yeah. And so they sent that into the federal uh, government, and they did studies, and they traced it back to it was radioactive cobalt that contaminated the a batch of steel in China. Yeah. And it's like, where the heck did they get radioactive cobalt? And then I think in India, a uh, doctor, a dentist or whatever, he went out of business and abandoned his practice, and he went back a couple of years to get the radioactive materials out of his x-ray machine because it didn't use high voltage, it used a radioactive source. And some uh, metal recycling yard had already cannibalized the machine and taken them out. 
and uh, they open them up and they yeah. says, oh, look, uh, look uh, daughter, this is like fairy dust. I can sprinkle it on your pajamas. Yeah. And it glows in the dust. Yeah, the worst horror stories you can yeah. ever think of. And uh, so they're, uh, they didn't really quite spend too much time on who are we going to blame for this. So versus find out where cleaning it, it yeah, up and right. find yeah. out where it came from. In, yeah, in, in Mexico, they got the same thing. They had uh, a bunch of this radioactive uh, steel, and it was shipped down to Mexico, and they turned it into lawn furniture, yeah. and then reimported it back in the United States. And uh, somehow uh, was sold by Sears or one of these big companies. And uh, somebody at some point or another discovered it was radioactive, and they'd been selling this stuff for a while. And it, they tried to do a quiet recall, and it got in the newspaper. And this was about what, 20, 25 years ago, a long time ago. And uh, it wasn't highly radioactive because it had been um, distributed. Yeah, and I mean, there, were, the there, always, there are always incidents of this stuff. It's like, I think there was a consumer product like toasters or something that they yeah. could target or Walmart that. I can tell you. It sounds uh, like there is a legitimate reason yeah. for buying. I can tell you a real buying. life terror <laughs> story. But I can't like, do it. my kitchen appliances? Yeah. Like this I, I can't do it online. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what uh, information was about to say to you. I've got something. Um, I, well, no, I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, I've already divulged doing, enough stuff. I don't have to do it here. Yeah, online. <laughs> I get myself in enough damn trouble as it is. Um, but uh, we well, remember like our old buddies, like Karen the, McGee the, the in February, West Chicago. In February had the thorium refining factory February. and they just dumped all the tailings wherever they could they were giving it away like black yeah. crunchy sand yeah, he says oh yeah you could front. use this stuff for setting fest posts it's real nice and crunchy and you could use it like fill and uh, one guy looked out his front yard uh, front window one day his entire front yard had died overnight yeah, the that was lucky. glowing no. If we're not lucky, next month we'll have the, have the, the, the honorary attendees from the <laughs> FBI yeah, paying, yeah. paying our media yeah, business. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, West Chicago went through hell trying to get them to clean it up. And because of ex post facto laws, you can't make something illegal that somebody has been doing. Uh, well, you can, well, but you can't prosecute you can't them for it. The yeah. After so what they unless did, they're a unless they're a tobacco company, is what they did rape them for is they imposed a new fee for storing radioactive materials within city limits. <laughs> and the very next day, the first boxcar load of radioactive waste rolled, rolled out of Karen McGee's West Chicago to head out west for disposal. Hmm. The next day. Yeah. Well, as soon as we go offline, I'll tell you guys some horror stories uh, right here in Chicago. Right here in River City. Yeah, you got trouble. I'm trying to find if I got... Uh, Starts with X. <laughs> trying to find out if I had Scud Busters on this. I think that's as a... Uh, Bruce Harrison Scud Buster? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's uh, probably on the... Uh, uh, nano rather One of than the few here. Few games here. I actually liked to play. Uh, the other one being Zero Zap. Mm -hmm. Here's the uh, Romox title screen that's flawless on a flat panel uh, LED uh, uh, monitor on a uh, CRT. The uh, CRT uh, circuits that do flip flops mm -hmm. on that color screen. <laughs> And uh, now it, it just displays. It. Yeah, here's uh, Ant Eater, and then they show. Uh, I think this is Topper, their version of. Uh, yeah, Topper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are just uh, demos. But yeah, yeah, that scrolling color there. You couldn't do that on a CRT. Oh, I broke your camera. I don't know. I didn't, couldn't read that before it went off. Um, <laughs> yeah, great UI, Google. So we're off the air? No, we're on the air. It just like, oh. sent me a message about something, and I don't know what it was. Oh, okay. Because by the time I actually got up, put my glasses on and get close enough to read it, it it's interesting. You, you, in order to get close, to, you have to put, take your glasses off. I, I would have to put my glasses on. I can see. 
I can see the other side of the room as clearly as I can see the whole yeah. whole host, uh, whole library here very clearly. If I want to read anything, I've got to put my glasses on. Um, yeah, for me, it's the same, it's the same thing. I have, I have for re reading printed text up close. I have to have a little bit of magnification or a whole lot of light on it. Like, but for at a distance, like I can read the display there. Any character on the display there is yeah. perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but if you know, print if it's just a little bit too far, you know, a little bit too close and a little bit too small and not enough light, yeah. then I have to, you know. It's got no old aim for sissies. It's just aim for sissies. I haven't adjusted to bifocals. They don't call them bifocals anymore, do they? I have no idea. I mean, yeah, there used to be a line you would see, and now it, you don't see yeah. that. Yeah, they have lineless bifocals, yeah. But they're, they're uh, you, you see people doing this. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you, you know exactly what they're doing. They're doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, I'm not so bad that I need a prescription, but I'm just bad enough that um, you know, I need some magnification or a whole lot of light. Well, I've got this fast. damn glaucoma with our cataracts, I mean, uh, not glaucoma, thank God. Uh, cataracts, nighttime, it seems like everybody's got their brights on all the time. There's huge aura around every headlight. Oh, they do. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, these and, uh, newfangled, uh, used to be halogen lights. Yeah, now oh, it seems like them. they're 100-watt LEDs. Yeah, I know. They're yeah, high exactly. output right LEDs, here. and they and they're moving yeah. to the uh, ultraviolet spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. They got that bluish-white color. I hate that. You know, I'd like to have one of those uh, big uh, spotlights that they used to have on police cars. Yeah. Know? Just every time one of those cars came for me, I'd turn that thing on and, and aim it right in his wall. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he's, he's got blind to his eye. Aim it to the left. Exactly. You've got two blind people. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah, it's not a problem. Trying to avoid each other. But I flash my lights. I flash my lights at yeah, people. Just tap it. And, and people will never turn their brights off. Yeah. And I know that sometimes uh, it's, it's necessary to have them on. It's necessary to have them on. But when you're approaching another vehicle, common um, courtesy is you turn it, but yeah. it back to stand. Cadillac used to have a little used to have a little device. Yeah. Uh, if it picked up bright lights, it would turn its own bright lights off. And when there when it was dark, it would turn the lights. Yeah, on it had a photomultiplier tube in it. I took one of those apart. Yeah. Uh, in the trunk, they had a box that was about a cubic feet of transformers and vacuum tubes that actually operated. Yeah. It was an amplifier to operate the relay yeah. that would shift between low beam and high beam. I was dating a girl in 1962 or something like that. Mm -hmm. She was driving her father's Cadillac, and I went over a rutted road going up a hill, and uh, it and there was another car coming, so it kept flashing the lights, flashing, 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 mm -hmm. flashing, flashing. So this guy stopped next to me, and of course I stopped too, because it was, you know, corduroy road, this corrugated thing. And he said, why are you flashing your lights? I said, it's a goddamn machine, you know, I'm not doing it at all. Mm -hmm. He said, it really is kind of blank. I said, yeah, I know. I, mean, I said, your lights are also going up and down, by the way. He said, but I'm not doing it. Anyway, we didn't get an argument, but because we both had, a uh -huh. we both had, are we still on? Yes, we're still on. Oh, never okay. mind. We're, 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 never we're mind then. In that case, language. then we were late for we were late for an appointment. Yeah, mm -hmm. late for a very important day. Yes, yes. Long before I met my wife, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vic, what are you going to show us next? Oh, I was just looking for scud busters here, but... Uh, By the way, we only have 18 minutes uh, oh. to our normal quitting time. Uh, do we have a, a, a different uh, URL for this thing today? Uh, yeah, it changed on us because we were using the camera. Oh, the, um, okay. The, uh, but, uh, Oh, by the way, as long as we have just a moment, I, I want to remind everybody that the fair, the Chicago TI International World Fair, this year will be October the 14th. We had to, we were originally going to have it on the 21st, and uh, someone in the library had uh, already requested half of that date. So we weren't oh, wow. going to have the whole date. So we had to move it to the 14th where we could get the whole date. Uh, and... Uh, Anyway, maybe the weather would be better as well. So save the date, everyone. Okay. 
Fourteenth. 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 Making it out so I can put it on the website later. There you go. Until it changes again. Until, well, <laughs> until the library, yeah, until we all get sick or we all have to wear masks or we all have to, God knows what. Or they all have to shrink wrap us in plastic. And yeah, them, have you seen the latest variants? There's a new variant, which is more transmissible. Yeah. Uh, the EBB or EXB or some damn thing. The RXB variant. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just on, it was just on, uh, on the news here. Mm -hmm. Something to look forward to. So boys and girls, be sure you have all your shots. And if you don't have all your shots, don't come to the fair. No, that's not true. We want you to come anyway. We're a mask. You, you know will be cauterized, however, at the front door, uh, as, as uh, Jim says, wrapped in plastic, plastic. or a bubble. You'll yeah. be made to live in a bubble. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll distribute Tyvek suits and rolls of duct tape. That's it, that's it, that's it. And we're yeah. going to tape you to the wall. You'll yeah. be able to see yeah. it. Clear plastic yeah. bags that go over. Oxygen yeah. supply sold separately. Yeah. That's right. Clear yeah. plastic bag, they'll go over everybody's head with the rubber band so it seals real nice yeah. around the That's neck. It. That's it. That's it. That's the one. Okay. Uh, hmm. Sure. Yeah, we're going to have not. We're going to have. The, let's see. We're going to have the FBI and the CIA and maybe the TSA here next month. Now we need to get the SPA. Yes, yeah. ASPCA. ASPCA. <laughs> yeah. I'll get them too. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Electricity in your in your in your favorite bed pet, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, back to the recipe writer here in Tiger Cub, disc number uh, uh, 1035 is simple databases. And. Uh, Hmm. Needs a little more study. I wonder if one of these would help uh, help that guy who was trying to write a database uh, recipe program to finish the one his dad started. You just have to find the extent of basic routine on making individual data statements or file statements for uh, you know, say up to a hundred different uh, card files or Why file cards. Why not 200, 300? I was going to start yeah, modestly. I could have said 50 complete. if he was going to do it. Right. Uh, I guess what is the final verdict? Do we want to do uh, Mint on this machine or Debian on all of them? Gosh, I don't know. Uh, I've uh, used Mint forever Mint because that I've seems to be a user-friendly. Let's, let's do Mint on this one and we'll have to do Debian on the others, but we'll reconfigure yeah, Debian sure. on the others. To look mm -hmm. Sure, why not? So now, what have we got on here? That is the backup of this. It's oh. got a raw dump of the storage on this in case we have to restore. We have a problem. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to shut this down. Any room left on this thing? Yeah. You? Okay. Quite a bit. I have got on the Windows 96 uh, computer in my uh, my son's room. I've got uh, 350 megs of my wife's pictures from a million years ago in Europe. And um, hmm. um, I was going to try and put those, bring that down and, and, and put that on this machine. I, I don't think there'll be any problem. It didn't, I mean, they're just dead or whatever. Yeah. And um, I was going to, uh, I want to look, look at some of them because they're all pictures of Europe. Uh, and um, I haven't seen them. I, I had one of these devices, they're all from slides. I had one of these devices where you put the, Put the pictures in and you know, slide it to the bottom and I did hundreds of these pictures for her. And since that time she hasn't looked at a single one. Uh, which is about the way most of my projects go.
Yeah, maybe uh, one of these programs on this disc. I'm going to have to look it up on... Uh, Great, I don't know what the name of any of these uh, are. Let's do a catalog of the disc. That was what, chart base. And these are all programs. So I bet you I have to actually uh, create a file first before I can load one with chart base. Yeah, like I said, Bill Gasco would be the guy to ask with his uh, TI based program and such. Sorts a chart file. Name a file to load. We don't have one. TI Writer Database. I don't know if you can access that from. Uh, and what program is this we're running? Uh, this is a disc from Tiger Cub, disc, disc number 1035, called, uh, uh, no, uh, 1036, called Simple Database, uh, Simple Databases. Oh, okay. There's three in a row, uh, 1030, 1035, and 1036, Information System, mm. Database, and Simple Database. So just on a, uh, throwing yeah, a dart right at the dartboard yeah. here. Uh, yeah, writer database. I've got forty years of forty years of Christmas letters and. Do we want to really read the instructions? Nah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> that from these long corners, line is long. The first line of this file must contain in the field numbers, like the field numbers. Oh dear God. Okay. All right. Lost me. <laughs> that didn't take long. Okay. Okay, we don't have any. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to take some legwork to... Uh, Glad we didn't read the instructions. <laughs> Let's look at field sort. When Dave Connery was alive, he used to, when he came over after every meeting, he came over to our house after every meeting, back in the days when you could actually get more than one person at a time in my office. Uh, we had eight people in there. And they used to try and think of any kind of a ruse to get me out of the room for a second and put stuff on my, my hard drive. <laughs> and uh, he liked to have sorting programs on there. So one day I happened to be looking through the hard drive. I said, well, where the hell all these programs come from? I got bubble sorts. I got this kind of sort. That oh, yeah. Sort, all those. Th I said, what the hell is that? And uh, come to find out, I asked him about it. And I asked I asked actually Mike Maximic, and he told me about it. Um, I just uh, I talked to Mike. I, I see stuff that Mike puts up on Facebook all the time. He just put up a picture of his mama, his uh, his mother, and uh, so I reminded him. I remind him all the time about the fair. Uh, anyway, he told me. Yeah, he said we put stuff on your computer all the time. He says every time you're out of the room, he says we're putting something on there. I said that's why you're always asking for glasses of water and. <laughs> File. Things like that, yeah. I think what we need is a left-handed smoke vendor. Yeah, yeah, I'll just that. send it's me out like, to the kitchen here for anything. Well, this might help them. Although this is a complete uh, filing program called Philo, F-I-L-O. It's an basic. And create a file, save a file, load a file, sort file. Gee, when's the last time you saw something documented that nice, telling you what each section, and a program this modular. You know, this module does this, that module does that. Recall from disk, 
display where is the data disk. Accept that, display at, what's the file name, okay? And here on uh, 2010, open number one, disk, disk number, input, right, yeah, okay. So it's all the standard uh, disk access. Uh, disk management, print, append, change, delete, insert. Okay, this looks pretty darn comprehensive. Maybe this is what we were looking for. Hmm. This one's called Philo. And again, we're on Tiger Cub. Uh, disk 1036, I believe, is the one. Oh, by Earl Ragus, if you yeah. recognize that name, he uh, he's a uh, fourth master. Uh, I got a stack of a reprints of his uh, going forth or learning forth or something like that. Uh, he had a newsletter. And he said, starting with TI fourth, and the gist of it was is he felt TI fourth was sort of cumbersome, but since you can write your own routines, uh, he says, well, how about if we have a little routine that does this for us or does that, and streamlines the operation? And <coughs> unfortunately, probably all of this is unnecessary because we have so many different versions of the fourth language uh, yeah, we do that now. have that yeah. done already. Unless somebody's a history major, um, you know, I was going to like scan them and put them up, you know, as available for anybody to read. Uh, he was quite flattered at the time. I mean, that was late 80s uh, when I asked him about it that anyone was still interested in fourth. Because at that time he figured that, uh, you know, nobody cared. And then we I'm came up with there's what? still a lot of fourth hiding out in the embedded space today. Yeah. yeah. Well, for the TI, we came out with FB fourth and yeah. turbo fourth at the same time. Yeah. And I think uh, Mike Brent uh, turned over his uh, turbo fourth uh, to Lee Stewart to be uh, in FB fourth because by sticking everything on the disk drive rather than in memory, uh, gives you more room for your program. You know, rather than filling up all of TI's memory with fourth, uh, you could actually do some write a program and do something with it easier. So we've got create a file, edit a file, display a file, display part of file, store alphabetically, store file, we read file. Well, I don't one. mean to nudge just, but it is five minutes to four, so uh, yeah. if um, I'm so, I can't seem to find Scud Buster, but. I'll be another time. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're not exactly running out of things to show. Uh, no. And uh, some interesting, really stu interesting stuff. And I, I uh, mm -hmm. do we know the date for next month? Do, do we have a calendar? I better have anybody calendar here. Wait a minute. Maybe I do. Maybe I do have a calendar. I don't know. Oh, I know what it is. Um, first Saturday in February is the 4th, I think. 4th of February? Do we want to do it uh, here again, or do we want to... Do we want to alternate maybe once or twice? That way we don't... Uh, that way it gives us opportunities and we don't... Um, Gives us some space because, like, I'm not ready to go fully back to every meeting that I'm doing, and I might like to alternate different well, groups. It's it's up to uh, it's up to you guys. I mean, I live here. Uh, I can get the the room uh, if I know a week in advance. Uh, I can only get it. And that might give advance. us a little extra time for Vic and I to powwow about what we're going to do video wise right. in the future. Because I think the yeah, pointing, and, and so pointing the camera at the screen works yeah. in a pinch, but it's not really very high. I mean, quality. we know the date, we just don't know the location. Yeah. So um, we can tell people uh, see you on the fourth, one way or another, yeah. and uh, and that's about yeah. it. And I think uh, I think Rick, if you're ready, I think we'll just wind it up and. Uh, yeah. We'll say goodbye to everybody and uh, thanks for watching those. Oh, you can uh, throw the camera around. The few of the proud. Uh, and address everybody personally. Yeah, that's right. I mean, well, it would, actually, we could if we if we knew who was there, if we knew who was 
actually watch them. Yeah, we, all, both, of, both of you people that are watching, we really appreciate it. Uh, if, there's, if there's only one of you, well, we appreciate you even twice as much. Uh, I guess that's about it until yeah. uh, next time. And uh, I don't know how to turn it off. So yeah, I can get a powered VGA splitter. Yeah, we'll yeah, figure, we'll figure look some, up the uh, we'll figure echo fan. Uh, I'll think. I'll, I'll see if I can send yeah. you a link, or I'll send you the actual software itself. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, hang on a second, people. <laughs>